How do we generate the cumulative frequency table? How can we get the median from an OGIF? And how can we get the probability of a set of range of data from our frequency distribution curve? These are the questions that we are going to be answering this question from Y 2018 GC exam paper. And if you are yet to subscribe, go ahead and click on the subscription icon, click on the notification icon. Let's get feedback from you. If you like the video, click on the like icon, share the videos. Let's build academic excellence in students together. With that, let's head over to our video for today. In this question, we are given the distribution of marks scored by two students in a test. I want to construct a cumulative frequency table for the distribution, then draw a cumulative frequency curve or who give and then use that to estimate the median and the probability that a student selected at random and um, obtained distinction if the lowest mark for distinction is 75%. So now, in our first assignment, we want to get the cumulative frequency table, and the feature of the cumulative frequency table will involve um, the marks, um, the class boundary, the frequency, then the cumulative frequency. So. If I had to go ahead and draw that, we have the max, we have the class boundary, the lower class boundary and the upper class boundary. Then we have the frequency, the frequency, then we're also going to have the cumulative frequency. These are the entries that constitute a cumulative frequency table. Now, if we go ahead to say we want to populate our table with the information that we are given from the question, we have 10 to 19, 20 to 29, 30 to 39, 40 to 49, 50 to 59. All of these are the range of the marks that were scored by the students. So down to 90 to 99. Then we can go ahead to finish up our table by estimating the class boundary then putting in the frequency, then evaluating the cumulative frequency. Now, for the case of the class boundary, we have 10 as the least mark in the first case and 19 as the highest mark. We subtract 0 0.5 from 10 and add 0 0.5 to 19 to get the lower class boundary and the upper class boundary respectively. And we do this for each of the entries as being shown in the table. So we have 39.5 to 49.5 and 49.5 to 59.5 and like that we can populate the table of the class boundary for each of the range of mark that was scored by the student in the test. Um, then our frequency, we are given this frequency 4, 7, 12, 18, 20, 14, 9, 4 and then 2. Now, to get the cumulative frequency, we had each of the entries, like 4 plus 7 is 11, 11 plus 12 is 23, and 3 plus 18 is 41, 41 plus 20 is 61, 61 plus 14 is 75, 75 plus 8 is 84, 84 plus 4 is 88, and 88 plus 2 is 90. The cumulative frequency is obtained by adding the entries and adding them cumulatively, the new entry you add to the sum of the previous ones, and we get our cumulative frequency like that. So we've gotten our cumulative frequency table. We can now go ahead to draw our cumulative frequency curve. So here on our graph, we'll plot um, the cumulative frequency against the um, marks that was obtained, but we're going to be using the class boundary for the marks, not just the mark that was given. So, on our horizontal and vertical axis, we can have our cumulative frequency on the vertical axis and the marks on the horizontal axis. I'm going to be using 2 cm to represent um, on, the, on, the, on the horizontal axis, on the marks axis, I will say 2 cm will represent 9.5 units. I'm not starting from zero in that case, so it's not linear at the beginning, was subsequently the aggregations of 10, 9.5, 19.5, 20.5, 29.5, 39.5, 49.5, and on down to the last entry we have 99.5.
Then on the vertical axis, I'm going to use 2 cm to represent 10 units. So I have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100. So now, what we need to plot is the values of the upper class boundary against the value of the corresponding cumulative frequency. So now, that means that we will start our first entry with 19.5, the first upper class boundary, and then the cumulative frequency is 4. So here, we'll have 4 and 19.5, 4 on the vertical and 19.5 on the horizontal. And in the same principle, we can trace each of the entries. Then the next one will be 11 and 29.5. 11 is here, 29.5, okay. Then the next one is 23 and 39.5. And then 41 and 49.5. And then 61 and 59.5. Then um, we have seventy five and sixty nine dot five, eighty four and seventy nine dot five, then eighty eight on the vertical axis and eighty nine dot five on the horizontal axis. Then finally. 90 on vertical axis and 99.5 on the horizontal axis. Now, with our set of points that we have noted, all we need to do is to use our French curve to join all these points together. But we need to know that we are plotting the upper class boundary against the cumulative frequency. That's how we got um, the locus of points that were noted on the graph. So, if we are to join all the points together, use blue ink. So, find the line of best fits and join all of them together. And the French curve will be quite useful here. Or, on the graph paper, if you can get a flexible material, you can actually make sure that all the points are fitted together. Wow, okay, good. So, with this, we've been able to plot our cumulative frequency curve also known as OGIF. My scale is that two represent two centimeters is representing ten units on the horizontal axis and on the vertical axis. Only to know that on the horizontal axis, the one for the marks, we are not starting on a scale of zero because the first entry there is nine dot five, not ten. And with that, we've been able to come up with our graph and then we can move on with the other questions that we are asked to solve for. Now, this is our scale. This is the scale. And we are done with that. So, now, in our next question, we are asked to find the median. We are asked to find the value of the median mark. Now, what we need to note is that cumulatively, all of our frequencies, they add up to 90. The frequencies add up to 90, and the median will be half of that, of that 90, and that is 45. So, we go to our vertical axis and locate 45. So, this is 45. Then, we trace to the curve. We can trace 45 to the, to the, to the curve. So that we can get the corresponding mark that is in line with our 45 on the cumulative frequency, which is the median, the 50%. And from here, we can see with this gradation, that median is 51.5%. So 45 on the cumulative frequency curve, on the cumulative frequency as is, corresponds to 51.5 on the mark, on the mark axis. So, the median mark from this cumulative frequency curve is nothing but 51.5 descent. So, good. 
Now, um, our, our last question on this particular question that we are solving is quite tricky, but we can look at it together and get the resolution out. We are told that um, the distinction starts from 75%. So now, going to the mark, we can try and mark off the 75% point. We have 69.5, then we have 79.5. 75 will be around here. Yes, around here. So from there, we can trace that up to our curve. This is 75%. That's the least mark for distinction. You can trace it up to our curve. And then we can see that correspondingly, this is giving us 80 on our cumulative frequency as is. Now, if 75% is amounting to 80, and of course, that's the least mark, then some can actually get higher than that. And then the region that is being shaded, you don't need to show this in your exam, I'm just using this for explanation purpose. The region constitutes the region of those who actually got distinction. So these are the distinction marks. And then correspondingly, this is the distinction frequency for those marks that we have identified. So now, we also find the probability that a student selected at random would have scored a distinction mark. Now, normally, we know that the definition of distinction is um, our desired outcome divided by the total possible outcome. So, probability of choosing distinction students is the possible outcome, which is our desired outcomes here, divided by the total of the possible outcome. So, the total of the outcome. So, here, our possible outcome will be the difference between 90 and 80. That's 90 over 80 over 90. And solving that, we get it as 1 over 9. That is the probability of picking a student that's called distinction. That's all we're going to be having for today is Dave Tooth Academy. And if you have found this video useful, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Click on the notification icon, like the videos, share with your loved ones, share with your friends, share with your younger ones, share with your relatives. And together, let's build academic excellence in students. Until next time, God bless you.